Okay, this is a hint for the comparison of protein interaction network and the genetic network with regard to their degrees, interacting degrees. Uh, so we first read into the protein interaction network, that's the data in the pairs. So for this code to run, you have to make sure all, all, all those data are in the same working directory. So I first uh, set my working directory to the source file. So my uh, R code and the data are in the same working directory. So, and then I also read in the genetic interaction network. I make sure these two data sites are in the same working directory. And so then we use a table function to calculate the, the degree for both protein interaction network and genetic interaction network. And first we concatenate the open reading frame in two columns into a single column using the C uh, parenthesis uh, command. And then uh, we use a table function to calculate the number of degrees for uh, every gene in the protein interaction network. And then we put it directly into data frame. And this will be the, the degrees, uh, protein track degrees for the PIN, for protein interaction network. And then uh, to make sure how the match function is going to work, I'm going I will uh, force those IDs into uh, characters. So this will avoid R to treat them as a fake numbers. So there. And I'm going to double check to make sure all the data are in the right format. So there, the IDs are in CHR, which for character, and the frequency, which is the number of degrees, are in integers. So to, to make sure, because we are going to merge the data, I want to make the data more meaningful. So I'm going to rename my PIM. I rename the first, uh, first column still called ID, but the second column I'm going to call that a P degree for protein interaction degrees. So there. And in fact, if I run the structure PIN uh, again, there. So this time the column has been renamed. Uh, the first row, first column is called ID. The second column is now called P degree for protein interaction degrees. And like we're going to apply the same approach for the genetic interaction network, GIN for genetic interaction network. So again, uh, I will concatenate the two open reading frame columns in the genetic pairwise table into a long list of IDs and then apply a table command, convert them into a frequency table and then directly put into a data frame. So I'm going to call this data frame GRN for genetic interaction network. So run these two lines and then, uh, because the match function, I want the match function to work on the characters. So I'm going to force all those IDs into character again. Uh, and double check the result. So now I have a genetic interaction ID. I also have the frequency. And to, to, to make sure the comparison, because the frequency is really a generic term, it's kind of confusing to use. So I'm going to rename my GIN table also as, uh, as IDs and G degrees. And if I put this and run the structure command again, so yeah, so we, the genetic interaction network, we also have IDs and G degrees. So now, um, basically, uh, if, we, if we look at the data now, we look at GIN. So if we look at the GIN and PIN now, we basically have two uh, data frames. GIN, we have IDs and genetic interaction degrees. We also have P, uh, uh, 
on n also have ID and protein fraction degrees. Our goal is basically to merge the two columns to one place so we can apply linear regression analysis. So we then going to use a match function to do this. Right. So and <coughs> so it looked like uh, here I use a match function to move the genetic interaction degree into the protein PIN data frame. So here I my match function is I match PIN ID with a GIN ID. So the PIN is my first parameter here. And a GIN is my second. So this is match of uh, the first one in the second one. And the position has to be in the second table. That's why so this must be GIN G degree in the bracket here. And all this result will be assigned into the first parameter, which is the PIN degree. So we run this command. Now this time if we if I look at the PIN again, so here so so now I have a second column called G degree. Not a third column, sorry. But those unmatched one will have this single column not available. And then we basically can apply linear regression uh, for the analysis. And in fact, it, it, it is highly significant, although the data actually is very noisy once we plot it. So yeah, the data is actually very noisy when we plot it. And uh, I can also uh, apply log transformation uh, because the data doesn't look like it's normal distribution. After we apply uh, a normal distribution, we basically get the same uh, conclusion. It is positive correlated, so the more protein interaction a gene have, the more genetic interaction it also tend to have. But the, the correlation is extremely weak. In fact, it's at the 0.03, which means very, very weak. Yeah. So, in fact, uh, if we want to uh, Summarize the what's uh, summarize the the genetic uh, on the match function. I think the match function is really the one that I'm testing now. The linear regression is really not big deal here. So for the match function, uh, and what I match here is match the the GIN IDs. To the PIN. Oh, I think I did the opposite. Uh, sorry. PIN IDs into the GIN IDs. It really doesn't matter though. And so this is my first parameter. This is my second parameter. And this matching function put the first uh, parameter into the second. And and then I have to put a second here because that's the values I'm going to take. Uh, in this case, the value is something called the G degree. Right. After I put this much, I put into the first parameter here. In this case, it's PIN. And I'm going to still call it the G degree just to, so I don't have to flip too many times. So there, so that's what the, the this command. You, you can do it opposite way. So we can also match, say, uh, GIN IDs uh, to the PIN ID. And in this case, the GIN is the first parameter, and the PIN is the second parameter. And then the, the matching has to come from the PIN. This should be p degree, and we can also put it into the GIN. But to make my our mind a uh, 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 clear, consistent, so going to know it to a uh, oh, g degree, and then of course, so if you if we use the first approach, the linear regression has to be done on PIN. Using the second approach, your linear regression will be done on the GI. So that's the difference.